Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Movies with Mia. If you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Mia Tiffany, and here we are watching the greatest classic films throughout history. Today, we are back on the case with Dr. Watson and Sherlock Holmes. First things first, I'd like to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your continued support of the channel. And if you're interested in becoming an exclusive VIP Tiffany Club member, then I highly encourage you to check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. If you are not quite interested in becoming a patron, however, you still want to support the channel, why not consider buying me a movie ticket? Currently, all movie tickets are being raised so that I can hire an editor. So if that's something that you are willing to support, head on over to www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Mia Tiffany. And I have provided that link down in the description box below. Today, we are watching the eighth episode of the Granada television series, The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, titled The Copper Beaches. But before we get into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about how Jeremy Brett came into the role of Sherlock Holmes. Jeremy Brett was a seasoned stage and screen actor, taking on roles from Hamlet on stage to Maxim de Winters on television, and of course, my personal favorite, Freddie Ainsford Hill from My Fair Lady, before he was approached with a role of Sherlock Holmes. Now, the idea with this television series was to faithfully and authentically recreate some of Sherlock Holmes's best cases. Brett was initially hesitant to take on this this role because he was terrified of being typecasted. However, he decided obviously to take on the role and he made it his number one goal to perfect his version of Sherlock for the screen. He conducted extensive research on both the character of Sherlock Holmes and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. He wanted to make sure that he was being completely faithful to the character of Sherlock. And finally, Jeremy Brett is actually one of the very few actors who had the privilege of playing both Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Brett went on to say that Sherlock was the most demanding role that he'd actually played, more so than Hamlet or Macbeth. There's a lot that goes into doing Shakespeare, so the fact that Sherlock was more demanding than his Shakespearean roles is amazing. So with that being said, this is my first time watching The Copper Beaches and I am so excited to get into it. But before we do, y'all know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, and let's get in to The Copper Beaches. Literally cannot get enough of this intro. I love Jeremy Brett so much. I think he's just the greatest Sherlock Holmes. But I have never seen Basil Rathbone, so I don't know if I can say that faithfully just yet. Looks like someone's trying to break in. Beautiful estate. Oh, the dog spots him. Run! Run for your life! Looks like a castle. Wow, I like it. He's got him. He's gonna get him. Okay, so this beginning didn't really give us anything. It was kind of vague. Not really sure what, what to expect here. Something wrong? It is pleasant that in these little records of our cases, which you have been good enough to draw up, that you have given prominence not so much to the many cause, but rather to those incidents. It's like, what? Say what? It sounds like you're speaking in tongues. <laughs> Gibberish. Instead of confining yourself to placing upon a record that reasoning, which is really the only notable feature about the thing. It seems to me that I've done you full justice in the matter. I think he's saying you've like, maybe you fluffed it more than it needed to be. I don't know. Crime is common. Therefore, it is upon logic rather than upon crime that you should dwell. Ah, uh, he's saying you should probably, you're writing my work in the wrong way. But I hardly think my scribblings deserve that. They have made your name a household word. What do the public care about the finer shades of analysis and deduction? Oh. No, they're having a fight. He's definitely in a mood today. The days of the great cases oh, God. are past. Oh, surely not. I fear so. Criminal man has lost all enterprise. Wait a second. The, the cases are getting a little less interesting. If they are starting to rev up for Moriarty, I'm going to lose my stuff, I swear. This note I had this morning marks my zero point. You will excuse my troubling you. There's a well-known agency for governesses called Westerways. Is that the mom from The Parent Trap? Okay, because it really looks like her. I don't know. It, it, I'm gonna feel really stupid if it is. That will do. Ew! I could not ask for anything better. Ooh. Splendid. 
I'm sorry. Um, actually, I'm good. <laughs> His voice is gross. Oh, that's the man in the beginning. What salary do you ask? I had four pounds a month. If that seems too much. Too much? How could anyone offer so pitiful a sum to a lady of such uh, attraction and accomplishments? Why was he so, like, quick to say yes to her? That's definitely the mom from The Parent Trap, okay? I've made up my mind. How could any gentleman ask you to accept anything under three figures? Your salary would commence at a hundred pounds a year. On one hand, I'm getting paid four pounds a month. So going from that to a hundred pounds a year, like what? But at the same time, he's kind of creepy. And I, I don't know. I don't know. What, what would you guys do? I, I would be curious to know in the comments. May I ask where you live? Charming rural place, the Copper Beaches, dearest old country house. And my duties, sir. One dear little romper, just six years old. Oh, that is charming. But him, my employer's weird. My sole duties are to take charge of a single child. Well, not sole. What else, then? To obey any little commands that my wife might give. Obey any little commands that your wife might give. Yeah, within reason. If you were asked to wear any dress that we might give you, you'd not object to our little whims, eh? No. Or to sit here? Or to sit there and that will not be offensive to you. No. That's weird, dude. His his voice is is perfect, though. I wonder if he's a voice actor. I want to cut your hair quite short. Cut my hair. That's quite impossible. And I'm afraid it is quite essential. It's a little fancy of my wife's. What the hell are you guys into? <laughs> oh, don't tell me they're like into some weird stuff, bro. So you went out your hair? No, sir. I'm afraid I could not. It is a pity, because in other respects you might have done very nicely. Do you desire your name to be kept upon our books? She's like, girl, if you don't cut your hair, oh, that crosses the line. I'm sorry about that, buddy. It seems rather useless. You could hardly expect us to find another such opening for you. Oh, but my Good hair. day, Miss Hunter. Yeah, that crosses a line, bro. I'm not gonna cut my hair for a job. I mean, if I was an actor, that's different. But like, for a governess? It's weird. I simply couldn't think of sacrificing it. The next day, I was inclined to think that I'd made a mistake. When I received oh. a letter from the gentleman himself. I will read it to you. Oh, yes, please. What a strange request. We are willing to give 120 pounds a year for any little inconvenience which our fads may cause you. As regards your hair, I am afraid I must remain firm. What? Is he trying to touch her hair? <laughs> I only hope the increased salary may recompense you for the loss. But I will accept the offer. As your mind is already made up. What danger do you foresee? Are you kidding me? He asked you to cut your hair. To be a governess. Red flags everywhere? What? I shall write to Mr. Rue Castle at once. Thanks. She looks incredibly uneasy. Well, Holmes, I should allow an assistant of mine to accept such a situation. It's so pretty, why do you want to cut it? But I get it, 120 pounds a year, that's a lot of money from four pounds a month, which if you do the math, I don't know, it's considerably more. At least she still has her pretty red hue. I'm just gonna keep it. Whew, that's intense. Your hair grows back, I guess, if you really want to think about it that way. But you look apprehensive, Miss Hunter. Not at all. Good, good. You must be Edward. Oh, his little boy's red head. There's so many redheads in this story, I love it. Oh, I see you have a present for Miss Hunter. <laughs> oh, well. Here we are then. Mrs. Toller, this is Miss Violet Hunter. How do you do, Miss Hunter? She's cold. I just hope that they don't, like, degrade her in any way. Because I feel like it was a really weird request. After you're refreshed from your journey, I'll take you on a tour of the Copper Beaches. Premises are certainly extensive. And extensive premises need protection. <laughs> Golly, I would stay clean away from him. Most respectfully, I'm sure the guy's nice, but he's just a little creepy. It's only Carlo, my master. <laughs> I call him mine. Toller is the only man that can do anything with him. We feed him once a day so that he's always keen as master. Ooh, I kind of love that his name is Carlo. That's cute. Oh, you're getting too close. Too close. <laughs> Mrs. Rucastle will be here shortly. Well, I am still curious about the conditions. <laughs> Oh, they're nothing at all. He has got to have been a freaking a voice actor. My wife is very fond of electric blue. I do not have such a dress. Well, that need cause you no inconvenience needed. That's actually my favorite color too, electric blue. That's crazy. Bro, why is he so weird? I don't know. Something's going on. Something's up. How do you do, Miss Hunter? I'm sorry I was not here to greet you. I was just telling Miss Hunter about the blue dress. I think it would fit you. 
Very well. This particular episode is really strange because of its vagueness. There's not really a case right now, right? So we're kind of watching it unfold in real time, like it's yet to happen. I really enjoy it. Oh, it's locked. What's in it? Is that her hair? Or was it s the previous governess's hair? And it's the exact shade. I think she chose the wrong situation, bro. What delightful little farms these are. You look at these scattered houses and you are impressed by their beauty. The only thought which comes to me is a feeling of their isolation. It's interesting. Cause yeah, there is something very like desolate and isolating about the, the way the homes are situated, you know? Had this young lady gone to live in Winchester, I should never have had a fear. It is the five miles of country which yeah. makes the danger. Yeah. It's so interesting the way, you know, perspective. What can it mean, Mr. Holmes? In the first place, I have no actual ill treatment. I cannot understand them. That was the second time that Sherlock touched her hair. I don't know. It's something with the hair and the red and I don't know. I feel like they're setting up for Moriarty, okay? It feels like that. I don't know. I went downstairs after breakfast. Mr. Rucastle informed me that an electric blue dress had been laid out for me in my bedroom. I love the blue with the black trim, though. That's beautiful. That sort of shade, oh, it's my absolute favorite color. Oh, superb, Miss Hunter. Could not be a better fit. Oh, <laughs> over here, if you don't mind. Excellent. <laughs> You're quite comfortable. Yes, thank you. I wonder if maybe they lost a daughter? So they're trying to like recreate the daughter and a new governesses? How long do you wish me to remain here? Well, an hour perhaps. But not, I assure you, an hour of tedium. Did you enjoy funny stories? Yes. Let me tell you about George, our verger. Why is the mother like looking at her like that? Oh my God, so weird. Then <laughs> Mr. Rucastle <laughs> began to tell me the funniest stories I've ever listened to. I laughed till I was quite weary. Is that the R already? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I think they had a daughter that they might have lost. It's time for you to attempt your duties, so go and change your dress. You can easily imagine how curious I became as to what the meaning of this could be. Yeah. And why was a wife looking at her all weird? Why is she just staring at her? On the very next occasion, I managed a small piece of mirror. Because I was able to see all there was behind me. There was a bearded man and was looking up earnestly at the house. Weird. Oh, that's the man that broke in. I lowered my handkerchief and glanced at Mrs. Rucastle. There's an impertinent fellow who stares up at Miss Hunter. Motion him to go away. That is so strange. She looks terrified. She has, she's speaking volumes with her eyes. Is it, oh. But something else occurred. Oh, Mr. Holmes, I've never been so frightened. Do you think that they're maybe holding someone captive or like... I feel like they have a daughter, or they had a daughter, but something happened. There is a turret, but it is invariably locked. The chance came for me to pass beyond the door. Okay, stairs. The stained glass windows are beautiful, by the way. I bet when the light hits it, it's just like magical. It's just, it's just a bird, it's just a bird. It's locked, why would it be unlocked? It looks like a princess in a tower type stuff, like fairy tales. Oh my god. What are they hiding in there? What has frightened you, my dear young lady? Whatever's behind the door of the tower. I don't know. Run! Run for your life! I was foolish to go up into the shuttered turret. Photography is one of my hobbies. I've made my dark room up there. No. Bull. Who's up there? Uh-uh. What do you have hiding up there? Dreadfully still in here. Why do you think I keep that door locked? I'm sure I don't know. If you ever set foot across that threshold again, I'll throw you to the Mastiff. Wow, he literally threatened, like, to kill her. Wow. You know what? You can keep your 120 pounds a year. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> what should I do? Dr. Watson and I will arrive at the Copper Creatures. There are one or two things I should like you to do. I would not ask this of you if I did not think you were an exceptional woman. This is intense and unfolding interestingly. So who is the person up in the frickin' tower? Or turret or whatever she called it. Open the cage for the mastiff. Oh no, he's gonna make sure that it's make sure that it's locked so he can't get out. Mrs. Tuller, I think Edward. 
Edwards locked himself in the cellar. I don't see why Master Edward would have locked himself in the cellar. Oh, he's gonna try and break whoever's in there free. That's why he's looking up there because whoever's in there, I'm assuming it's a woman and maybe he might be in love with her. After you. <gasps> well, that was easy. <laughs> okay, now he's up the freaking roof, about to like break the shuttered window to save whoever's in there. <laughs> was I right? It's their freaking daughter. My god, this is so intense! <gasps> and they're coming back! I need to know the story here. I need to know what this story is. Oh, Looks as though someone's gone across the roof! What have these people been hiding in their freaking tower? Yes! It is for me to ask you that. John Savior! I knew it was his daughter! I freaking knew it! He's gone for the dog! Watson. It's the first time Watson has ever fired his gun! Oh my gosh! Someone's loose the dog! He's not been fed for two days! <laughs> Yeah, that's- I'm sorry, sir. Like, you know, why do you want the Mastiff to, like, hurt them? That's, like, stupid, bro. Come on. Not the dog, not the dog, not the dog! Ooh. Oh, poor thing. Oh, gosh. That was intense. I've done what I can for me. Now I need the surgeon. But, I mean, why were you going to get the dog when the dog hasn't eaten for two days? Like, bro, come on. Come on, bro, let's think. I could have told you your pains were wasted. Ah. Do tell. I'm, I'm ready enough to tell you what I know. She was never happy at home from the time that her father married again. Oh, by his first marriage. Wow. But, but it didn't become bad un until after she met Mr. Fowler. Why, he was Miss Alice's young man. You, you might have seen him out in the road by the field. Yes. Watching the freaking windows, yep. We see all, we saw him. Miss Alice had rights of her own under her late mother's will. Mr. Rucastle wanted her to sign a paper. He could use her money. When she wouldn't do it, he kept worrying her. Wow. Because she wouldn't sh give him the money that was given to her by her mother in her mother's death. And then Mr. Rucastle brought Miss Hunter to impersonate his daughter and get rid of the young man. You have it, sir. Just as it happened. Makes perfect sense. But where is Mr. Fowler and Alice? Mr. Rucastle survived. Mr. Fowler and Miss Rucastle were married. Miss Hunter is now head of a private school in Walsall. Love it. Admirable, indeed. What a read. Fantastic. An admirable account, Watson. I humbly defer considerations to your literary judgment. Good. Now <laughs> suddenly he's like, Fantastic job, Watson. Okay, so I was wrong that they were setting up for Moriarty, but I know Moriarty is coming eventually. Fantastic. I mean, that was such a fun watch. Natasha Richardson, that was the freaking mom from The Parent Trap. I knew it. Wow, that was such a good episode. I really appreciated that one. It was really strange because it was quite different from the other ones we've seen where it's more of like, I mean, we did have some recollection, but the case was unfolding in real time. It wasn't like this happened and now we have to kind of figure it out or piece it back together or go backwards. It was like, this is unfolding in real time. So we kind of get to see it as it's happening. And I really, I really enjoyed that. Um, I still feel in some way, for some reason, maybe because it's like the red hair, I, I thought it was connected to Moriarty. Maybe it's not, maybe I'm freaking out. But I know Moriarty is coming and Moriarty is one of my favorite villains and I cannot wait until they finally show him. So yeah, that was really, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I always love watching Jeremy Brett and David Burke. And I think we're about five episodes away from being at the end of the first season or series. And I'm kind of sad because we have to say bye to David Burke. So, but it's okay. I, I'm excited to see Hardwick. I'm, I'm excited to see Hardwick's take on Dr. Watson. So that's going to be fun. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much much for watching this episode with me. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you would like to become an official Tiffany Club member, then please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to stay in the loop.
If you want to see this episode's full reaction, you will find it on my Patreon, as well as our FlickPick polls, which allow you to vote for future videos, and our MWM Live watch parties, where every other Saturday night at 6pm, we come together and we watch one classic film live via Zoom. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, head on over to that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. In our next video with Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson, we are going to be watching episode 9 titled The Greek Interpreter. And might I say we are like five episodes away from the final problem. I'm going to pop that bubble for you guys right now. I know what it's about and I am not prepared for it. So yeah. I just want to let you guys know that. But if you haven't seen The Greek Interpreter, I highly suggest you watch it first before watching the reaction. And I have provided links down in the description of where I bought my physical copy. If you have a recommendation for any classic Hollywood films, head on over to my website, www.miatiffany.com. Scroll all the way down and you will find our recommendation form. If you aren't quite sure of what I've reacted to on the channel, fear not. I do have a letterboxed account under the handle at Mamma Mia Tiffany. There you will find all of the movies I've reacted to and I'm still in the process of getting all those links in the little descriptions of where you can actually find the YouTube video. And while you're on social media, why not follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Movies with Mia and on Instagram and TikTok at Movies with Mia underscore. As always, guys, this is such a pleasure. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe and healthy out there and I'll see you, boo, in the next video. Bye, everyone. It is time. We're doing part two. Season 15, episode 129, titled The Hot Mess of Mia Tiffany. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Blooper reel. Okay, next. Today, we are watching the eighth, 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 eighth. I literally just said eighth. Wow, that's amazing. Titled The Couple, The Couple. <laughs> you could tell that I was already gonna mess it up when I said titled. Ugh. And Maxim DeWimmers. <laughs> My God, why is it so hard to speak? <laughs> of course not. <when> I... <laughs> to go ahead and accept the role. And he also went all in into perfecting the his version of for the screen. <laughs> did I even have bloopers? I don't even think I had bloopers for that one. I probably did. I probably did. Actually, yeah, I, I probably did. <laughs> I did it. I've won the game.